Let's now look at some of the commands that we use to work with files and directories. Now, clearly the most important thing that we need to find out is what files and directories are available. Is there a command that will show us what we have available at any given time? The answer is yes, there is. There is a program called ls, which is short for list, and it is used to display the details of files, and the most important detail that we'll be looking for is the file's name, and also display the contents of directories. Before we proceed, I'll show you an example of the use of ls. Here I am logged in again to my zip account, and you'll find uh, the little shell is telling me at the moment that my this is the directory that I'm currently sitting in. I'm currently sitting in home mvirtue course, which means I'm sitting in a directory called course, or if you like, I'm sitting on a branch called course, which is in turn part of a larger branch called mvirtue, which is in turn part of a larger branch called home, which is in turn part of the root. So let's find out what we have on this particular branch by doing an ls. Press enter, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six different things. They have various names, and they are arranged in alphabetical order. It doesn't tell me what those things are, but I know from my use of Unix and my experience with ls that some of them are going to be files and some of them are going to be directories. As to which one is which, it's a bit difficult to tell. There is an option that we can use with ls. Remember we talked about options? ls minus capital F. If we type that in instead and press enter, we find the same list, but notice it is slightly different. Right here we have a forward slash after subdir1, and that is an indication that subdir1 is a directory. That little slash is not part of the, the directory's name, it's just a little indication that that is a directory. So you can use the minus F option then to differentiate between files and directories if you want to. Let's look at some other options for ls. There is an option called minus L. Display many file details including size and security information. We'll just look at a few of the other options before we go and experiment with those. Minus capital C, that's an uppercase C there and it does make a difference whether you use uppercase or lowercase. Uh, arrange the list alphabetically in columns. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And minus little r, recursive. Display the contents of every subdirectory if there are any. All right, well, let's go and have a look at those three options. Firstly, we'll look at the minus l option, which, if you recall, gives us more details than we otherwise would have had. So ls minus l. Now we get a whole bunch more information. Now let's have a look at some of it. I'm going to briefly explain what it is, and I will explain it in much more detail in a later chapter. We have over here the file permissions. This is security information about who can access the file and do what to it. Except for the very first one is special. The very first one tells you what type of entity this is. It is, a, is it a file? Is it a directory? If you see a dash there, it is a file. If you see a D there, it is a directory. So that's a nice way of telling that it's a directory as well. The other nine things are security information. Then we have the link count, which I'm not going to talk about just now. We'll talk about that later. Then we have the owner of the file and the group of the file. Again, we'll talk about these later. Then we have the size of the file in bytes. Then we have the date and time that the file was last modified, which is fairly straightforward. And then we have the name of the file. So the ls minus l option is very commonly used and very useful. Let's also look at the minus C option, ls minus capital C, and we get it arranged in columns. Now that's not a particularly useful array of columns. It's six columns, but each column contains only one item. If we could find a uh, directory that had more things in it, we would be able to uh, see what a column really looks like. So I'll try an ls of another directory. How about ls? I think there's a lot of files in public HTML slash trip. How about that? 
that. Now, I forgot the minus capital C, didn't I? Well, there is a lot of files in there, so let's have a look at that. Now, I'm just going to go back to that command again and put a minus capital C in there as well to make a little bit of a difference. And then I get them in columns. So that's what the minus capital C option does. You notice that I put in that uh, public HTML forward slash trip thing after the minus C. Those, that is, of course, the argument to LS. We talked about arguments before. And all arguments to LS are interpreted as the names of either files or directories. So what LS did is it looked at the thing that I typed in, that public HTML trip thing, and it tried to determine whether it was a file or a directory. It turned out that it did actually turn out to be a directory, because I knew it would. And LS recognized it as such, and so it displayed the contents of that directory. If it turned out that that thing that I typed in was a file, it simply would have displayed the name of the file. Or if I'd used the minus L option, it would have displayed all the other details of that file. So to summarize, any argument that you type into LS, LS will do one of two things. If that argument is a file, LS will display, display the name of that file. If the argument is a directory, LS will display the names of all the files and directories that are inside that directory. I'll just give you one or two more examples of that. I could say ls using the long listing, minus l means long listing, of dot dot slash public, well I'll just type it in, okay there's all my typing done, and then I get the full details of that particular entity. Now that particular entity happened to be a file and so I got the, the name of the file and all the details of that particular file. If the entity that I type in is not a file, it is in fact a directory. I'll do one that I know to be a directory, set6 underscore jo. Then I get a long listing of each of the files in that particular directory. I can also just say ls in the current directory again, ls minus l, another dot txt and it gives me just the long listing of that particular file. If I just said ls of another, excuse me, another .txt, it just lists me the name. If I say ls of subdir1, then it lists me the contents of subdir1. That's because subdir1 was in fact a directory, or if you like, a subdirectory.